Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I came across something that really made me laugh. So I'm gonna load a little, load a little bit of nine millimeter while I talk to you guys about this. Uh, and it's funny because this is gonna be kind of a little bit of a poke at the online uh, tactical community that's out there that's risen up, which I think is a fairly new development. Uh, I'm just now familiarizing myself with it. But yeah, I saw a photo of Chris Kyle's rifle in the NRA museum. And the thing that struck me after I go look at certain groups, little social media groups and everything I've joined and reading a few forums and things, of uh, how critical people are of everyone else's stuff. Like there are people who are like, oh my God, if you rattle can a rifle, uh, you know, you're such a loser. Oh, that's so terrible, terrible quality. Or, you know, anything that's just basically makeshift ingenuity, it seems like it's mocked as it, it's not good enough. And uh, it's this really weird phenomenon, you know, that you see online with, with all these people with this stuff with bragging rights. And uh, then you see Chris Kyle's rifle. It's been rattle canned. It has been taken with spray paint. And a lot of the pieces, because they're black from the factory, have been spray painted. Not only that, but he's got duct tape all over it. And when I mean spray painted, I'm talking the barrel the suppressor, the optics, the bipod, those are all rattle can. Notice even his black rail on the side, that rail's been spray painted. That's certainly not uh, any sort of Duracoat or uh, Cerakote, that's for sure. He's got his group cards duct taped on. People don't know what that does on the back, that's a group card. Uh, that gives you all your drop rates and everything for the ammo you're using so that you know at different distances how much the ammo drops. He keeps a record of all that written there. So, and any other little, little notes he wants for quick reference. Uh, that's standard. Uh, that's not just snipers do that. A lot of hunters do that and have done that for many, many years uh, for long range hunting. Uh, same basic concept. But yeah, that's, that's all his ballistic data there written down and then duct taped on there and then wrapped on there so that it stays on. It's wrapped all the way around the stock so that it's there, it's secure, it's not coming off. He might even have a little piece of plastic over it or it laminated. Laminating is good, keeps it uh, waterproof. Common practice. You know, a lot of these people, they would freak out about that. But you got to stop and think about that. The people online who say these statements, you look at their statements and how everything has to be done a certain way and if you don't do it exactly their way of the highest quality it's just not good enough it's garbage uh, yet Chris Kyle I think his record speaks for himself I'm not going to get into a debate as to who the best military sniper is because if, if you, someone were to say that you're going to be dealing with Carlos Hathcock fans coming in <laughs> and they're going to rip you a new one different eras you can't really compare them like that uh, but that being said he is the most recognized currently probably the most famous sniper in the military uh, currently of this era. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, pretty much everyone knows who he is. Uh, the guy clearly knew what he was doing because he wasn't just a sniper, a school trained sniper. He was a Navy SEAL. Um, probably no better infantry in the world. Probably none better. And the guy's kill record and achievements uh, pretty much speak for themselves. He obviously probably knew a little more about shooting and field craft um, than pretty much the people posting in these communities. So I'll say he knew, knows more than I do. Not even going to deny that. I wouldn't compare myself to him. Yet, there he is with a rattle canned gun and duct tape all over it. Why? Because it works. It works. He didn't have a gun that was intended to be a piece of art. It's not there as a shelf queen. That is a rifle that he needed to camouflage in the field. He needed it to work. He needed it to be durable. He needed his group card to stay on without caring if it was pretty or a piece of art. And uh, he killed many a men with that gun without being seen. So uh, if anyone wants to argue that his methods weren't effective, you would have to look at them and go, are you crazy? Are you crazy or are you stupid? It's got to be one or the other uh, because it worked. It worked. And that's the thing. That's what people need to realize. Um, many people for a long, long time have found successful ways to, be, uh, to have ingenuity with their weapons. Sometimes you have to do stuff makeshift. 
you know what, sometimes you don't want to spend a bunch of money on Cerakoting. Maybe you've got a rifle like that. That's probably what, a $5,000 plus rifle he's got there easily? Rattle can't. A lot of people put money in a gun for the function, for the quality of it. That's a functional gun, and then they don't want to spend extra money making it look pretty. They need it to work. Um, and people need to understand that difference. There's a difference between a safe clean or a gun you put on display versus a gun you plan on actually using, and I don't care what your application is. I don't care if it's a military operator in the field. I don't care if it's an avid hunter and sportsman. I don't care if it's your shit hit the fan pieces. You know what? There's something to be said for ingenuity. There's something to be said for just making things work through any means necessary. All right? And not everyone has the time because of their specifics to, to worry about things like that. About these little minutia of this stuff needing to be perfect. You know, people argue all this stuff. I saw the same thing when I was using leather uh, slings. I have like three of them right now, three of those claw type leather slings. Everyone's like, well, the military's gone over to nylon. You need to get with those times. Like, okay, I, I've never used a nylon one. I have no experience with a nylon sling, like they're talking about as far as what the military is using today. I have no experience with it. Um, whole new learning curve. What's wrong with the leather? I like leather. You look, he's got a leather sling on there. Leather claw type sling. Right there. Again, the same people who would say those sort of things would, would be like, well, I guess Chris Kyle didn't know what the hell he was doing using a leather sling instead of nylon. You know, it's this, this mentality of people out there who don't realize that, you know, there's more than one way to do things. Um, with a lot of stuff you do when it comes to shooting, uh, no matter what your application is, there isn't always a right and wrong way to do things. Sometimes people have to be... Uh, use a little ingenuity. Sometimes they have to improvise. Sometimes they have to do things to make it work for them personally in their specific situation. You know, and everyone's got these ideas that if you don't do it this way, it's not right. Well, you know, some things cost extra money. Some things that everyone talks about doing right might actually cost you in other ways. And you got to think about that for a moment. Absolutely got to think about that for a moment. Just like the, the whole thing, all these guys online, you've got to pen your um, gas blocks on your ARs. You don't have to pen your gas blocks. Yeah, I understand the issue with some of them coming free, but there are good clamp-on ones that don't come free at all. Uh, there's plenty of clamp-on block designs out there that fire thousands of rounds without ever coming loose. Uh, furthermore, you know, some people actually like to clean their gas blocks from time to time. Just throwing that out there. Uh, pinning stuff in place does make it more difficult to clean. Uh, pinning something like that through the barrel could affect the barrel harmonics and lose accuracy. Big deal if you're shooting really long range. You know, there, there's more than one right or wrong way to do things. Uh, and everyone has these ideas that if you don't hold a gun a specific way or you don't code it a specific way or whatever, that you're doing it wrong. And you see so much of that in this community because this community didn't exist for me years ago. It's really kind of, a, for me, a new phenomenon. I'm just observing it. And it's just a really interesting how judgmental it is and how, you know, everyone has these ideas of either you're doing it this way or it's not right. And there's so much of that out there. But then you see some of the greatest shooters of all time uh, who have the track record to prove it, who aren't doing things right. Who aren't doing things right. I mean, right there, you look at his rifle alone. I mean, these people, if, if they didn't know that was Chris Kyle's rifle and you were to throw that up into some of these groups and forums, there would be people saying, oh, you ruined a perfectly good rifle with that rattle canning. Ooh, what do you have all that duct tape around the stock? Well, you need to upgrade that leather sling. I mean, you would be hearing stuff like that. There would be people picking it apart. Picking it apart when that rifle has probably more confirmed kills than any other rifle they've ever seen in their life. In the field by someone with more training and more skill than any of us are ever going to have. But people will pick it apart. And I understand there's endeavors that are total science, but there is a certain art form uh, when it comes to shooting, when it comes to camouflage, when it comes to anything like that. There's an art form to that. And there's a lot of improvisation uh, with that, a lot of ingenuity involved. There's a lot of things that have to be adapted to your personal situation. Uh, it's not a straightforward always right or wrong. And, and I think that rifle 
when you see that and you realize whose rifle that is, who put that duct tape on it, who probably rattle canned it themselves, it makes you have to step back and go, you know, um, guys, maybe maybe uh, it's not as straightforward as you think. It's just there's just one way to do things only, and if you don't do it that way, you're wrong. You know, if someone wants to rattle can their gun to make it camouflage a little better, they want to do their own paint job. So what? Does it work? Does it get the job done that they want it to do? All right then, what's the problem? Let them rattle can it. Who cares? All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.